Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a couple of cases for the Galaxy Z Fold 3. Um, if you're following the channel you may have seen the unboxing on this a couple of weeks ago. I managed to get the phone a week early so uh, thanks again Samsung for sending out early. It was great to be able to unbox this for everyone, show everyone what the device is about uh, before it was actually fully available. Um, and I believe some other people also got theirs early so uh, well done to you guys as well. Um, the case I unboxed with the phone when I got it was this uh, flip case, or this S Pen case I think it's called, um, and this came with the actual Z Fold 3 starter kit. Um, and since then I've purchased another case which I did actually record an unboxing video for, but for whatever reason the sound just completely didn't get recorded so it was missing a soundtrack so I didn't bother posting it. I thought I'd take the opportunity instead to spend a few days with the case and do a better review of the case because now I've used it for a few days I can list some pros and cons of it and also just compare it to this uh, S Pen case that came with the phone. Now one of the big upgrade features of the Galaxy Z Fold 3 compared to the Z Fold 2 is that they managed to get um, a, a stylus input working on the actual inside screen. There's no digitizer on the main display on the outside, well, that's not the main display, on the uh, external display there is no digitizer so you can't use the S Pen there but there is an S Pen, uh, there, there, there are two digitizers actually glued together effectively is the easy way of describing it um, and it does support um, S Pen input and for most part of it, it is the S Pen uh, you, you know and love right and you can just go ahead and start uh, squiggling away on there and, and it works really really well, it's responsive um, it feels like I'm using an S Pen on my Note or my Tab S7 Plus, great so then to make the pen more useful by having it with you all the time, they introduced this S Pen case uh, into the lineup of the cases that are available for it. And I guess the main thing here was that um, you could then keep the pen with you and uh, stow it away so that it was uh, adequately protected. So the nib, you don't want that tip getting damaged obviously. So um, you're gonna keep it in the case like that. That's fine, but I'll be honest, when the case was in the phone and this pen thing was attached to the case. Now, just a quick one, when I did do the initial unboxing, I wasn't aware at the time and I found out right after the video and uh, a lot of people did leave comments on the same thing as well, but I've not had a chance to post since, is that the um, pen holder does actually slide out. It fits in there quite firmly. The only thing that's stopping it from sliding out normally is that little dot. Um, that, see that little lump there in the actual sliding mechanism? That's enough to keep it in place and it definitely doesn't slide in that easily. Whether it gets loose or not over time, if you're pulling it in and out a lot, who knows, maybe it will, but uh, it's not the biggest problem to be honest. It's it's such a long, uh, a long uh, slidey mechanism that the friction alone is enough to keep it in anyway, as you can see, right? So this is what they did to allow you to connect your, uh, keep your pen with you. Fine, but it's bulky. I have to say this, this, when it's connected to the case and you've got the phone in there, this is as wide as my Note 10 Plus, but then it's also twice as thick because you've got the whole fold when it's closed. It's, it's thicker than your average phone, unfortunately, right? It's just the way it is. So you've got a phone that's, then you've got a device in your pocket that's nearly twice as thick as your Note 10 Plus with the same width that all of a sudden becomes very, very bulky. So that's one immediate downside to this case is if you want to use the pen, it's advertised to use the phone with the pen and that was a big feature of the phone. You've got to have this with you and then I hope you've got deep pockets because this is not easy to carry with that attached to it. You definitely are not tying your shoelaces with that in your pocket, I guarantee you. And if you are, you've got big pockets. So. With that little run out of the way of the S Pen situation, other than that it's great and with the S Pen slider off now, I'll be honest, the case actually isn't too bad. It's nice um, overall but there were some issues that I found personally that I didn't like and for that reason I thought I'd try out another case. So the case we're comparing this to as you've seen in the title of the video is the Aramid case. It's, it's a carbon fibre uh, material um, and what I liked about it was, well, definitely on paper at least, was when I was looking at it was it appeared to be a very low profile case and it looked like it was going to add minimal bulk to the phone. Um, there are 
pros and cons to both of these so we're just going to go through and try and do a fairly detailed talk through of each case i am going to take this off and put my phone back in here just to talk through some issues but since this one is already on the phone let's just quickly talk about this one first um, so as you can see there the carbon fiber weave is visible it's coated with a very very nice uh, soft touch finish so it gives you quite a nice grip on the phone it's not slippy at all it's definitely a grippy case um, and that's a good thing because you want a bit of grip when you're holding a device like this you don't really want it to slip out of your hands and, and hit the floor um, and on that note if it was going to hit the floor in a case like this you've got your uh, the front and the top and bottom sides and the, the back and I guess to some extent the front protected unfortunately though the hinge is fully exposed so if you were to hit the phone uh, on the floor on this side here with the hinge going down there's no protection you're going to get some damage on the hinge unavoidable right um, again I will talk about the differences here uh, once I switch case um, but other than that the material is well, itself is actually very very thin so if you can if i hold it up at an angle like that right or maybe like that you can see the actual protrusion from the screen there is definitely some protrusion which is nice because if you're laying the flat down phone flat down like that it's keeping the screen away from the surface you're putting it on mostly right if it's a flat surface but uh, the the good thing is it's still thin enough not to get in your way so you're sliding your finger around the edge to bring up the edge display or just typing your fingers are close to the edge of the screen it's not actually getting in the way and i'm not noticing that as a problem so that it's good that it's not such a um, you know a uh, thick case overall that it's not actually getting in the way of using the main screen because that would be annoying otherwise right now one thing you'll notice here straight away when i when i do this is that's sliding away and you ask yourself why is it sliding away so easily the reason why it's sliding away is because there's actually a sticky back uh film under here which i haven't actually bothered to peel off and stick because i haven't committed to this case yet i bought it obviously i've committed to it from a buying it perspective but i don't know if i'm going to be using it i wanted to give it a little trial run first and obviously i wanted to be able to remove it again uh, for this video anyway so um, and it turns out I had to do the video because the first one, as I said, soundtrack just completely didn't record. So, yeah, it, it's it's something that's easily going to slide away from the device, as you can see, um, only because I haven't got um, the sticky back film uh, peeled off. So that's not a defect with the case. That's just the way I'm choosing to use it at the moment. Um, let's talk about this when it's open. Another good thing about this case, again, you can see on the sides, right? Very, very low profile all the way around. So sorry about the dust on the screen. It's been in my pocket. You can't avoid the dust getting in there. Um, is low profile all around. It's not adding a lot of bulk. This way you're adding what, maybe each direction, two millimeters maybe, and two millimeters that way as well. You've got about a millimeter, millimeter and a half max on each side there. Um, two to three millimeters max that way and that way in each dimension and thickness wise as you can see it's extremely thin it's thin enough that the cameras still protrude past the case and this is something that I've got to mention because I'm comparing it to this so when you're laying the phone down flat like this right it's cool because you can lay it down flat but you see that it's not actually flat is it because the back of the phone is all of a sudden not flat. You've got your little camera notch there. That's how thin this case is. This case is so thin that the cameras protrude past it. And obviously they've put a little rim around it to protect the camera lenses, which is great when you put laying it down flat. But if it is down flat, just be aware you're going to get that movement. So you're there, you're, you know, right in the way. Look, the phone's moving. It's not flat anymore, is it? Nah. I didn't realize that straight away when I was buying the case. I realized it afterwards, but there we go. Swings and roundabouts, as I said. There are swings, there are roundabouts. Right, so another advantage of a case like this is using the front screen for selfies. So obviously you've got this lovely tri-camera system here um, and that is gonna give you a lot better selfies than that and most certainly better than the one that's under the display because this is obviously under display so there are pixels even though it's very close to them it can obviously see through them and you get a decent picture out of it fine for video calls and stuff but you're not going to rely on that for selfies and any sort of 
solid picture quality and if you do you're feeling yourself because that camera is probably not really designed for that sort of stuff more for taking video calls when you're on the device and for that it's fine but you want to use that camera system for selfies now to use that camera system this display needs to be visible again i'll talk about it when i when i put this one on but when you've got this case on and you want to use the front display how can you because this is flipped back and the only way you can do it is to fold it back like this but you can't fold it back all the way because otherwise you're obstructing the cameras and then well it's obstructing half of your screen still so it's not a great experience using this for selfies with the front facing uh, display and I have used that quite a bit it's a really really good feature because it's a nice way of taking pictures uh, a selfie especially with everyone in the frame and getting a really really high quality selfie it's a lot better than using that camera I find myself using this more than anything else therefore the front display does need to be fully unobstructed and this doesn't work for me um, and another thing I have to say again with this case on very nice very low profile it's definitely a strong material there right that carbon fiber weave there is it fits in my car holder. So I use a small tablet holder um, now for this phone. Initially, I just had a standard car holder, um, but I use a small tablet holder on the dashboard and it's not obstructive at all, believe me, it's not. Because when you're using maps or maps and something else in split screen, um, maybe you've got, I don't know, you're watching, uh, not watching something, but you've got something else open there on the side. Uh, on a big screen like this, it's beautiful. It's better than using my Note 10 for navigation, hands down, this wins. The screen inside is just awesome, right? The problem is, is you need to get it in a car holder. Now, with this case, again, the case actually passes the, the, the device when it's open a little bit. So you can't really get it in, in both directions on the, well, so you can't get it in at all in the car holder. It's just a pain because this is just hanging off the sort of edge of the device, as you can see there. You can see it's a bit wider when it's open. So this part is just in your way. The only way you could get it into the car holder was if you fold half of the case back like that, then stick it in the car holder. That was okay. That was working. Yeah, it wasn't the big, biggest problem in the world, but just something to point out whilst we're doing the comparison is that is definitely an issue. So this is very, very easy to get in and out of your car case, your car holder, because it's just a standard, uh, it's just like a little mini tablet to be honest really, and it's, the, you know, the, the hinge is not flappy, it's a really, really rigid, rigid, very high quality hinge on this device, it's not going to close with a bit of pressure from your car holder, it really, really, really is a treat to use this uh, uh, as, your, as your mapping device or navigation device whilst you're driving, it's fantastic. Um, obviously though with this pace with this case you are not going to be able to carry your pen around now why Samsung didn't just give you the option to have a little cap on there and you know have it magnet onto your device because there is some metal in there I'm sure why they didn't do that I don't know I tried my Tab S7 pen to see if it may and there is a very slight magnetism there not enough to hold it on but they could have done that come on Samsung if you're watching this give us a little magnet there give us the option to carry this thing around easy Maybe have a retractable nib, I don't know, do something, you can do it. I know you can do it. You can make bending glass displays. You can make the pen stick on there. Oh, you know what? Make the hinge a bit thicker, make the device a millimeter, two millimeters thicker. Have the, this is the S Pen from my Note 10. Look how thin it is. Have that go into the device. That would be the ultimate. If you get this pen in this device on the next fold, what more could you want? You've got a device that's got a, very, very usable external display, I'll be honest, for just standard use for typing and all that good stuff. Very usable. Then you pop it open and you've got an absolute beast of a display. Very, product, very, very productive display there. You've got three-way split screen going on. If, what more could you want? And you've, you know, it, it, it's fast. The device is fast enough to handle that multitasking on a display. Take full advantage of a display like that. When you're watching YouTube or videos, yeah, you're gonna get a black banner but you get a black banner with a Note 10 on the sides. On this one, you get a black banner on the top and bottom. You're still getting an overall bigger viewing area when you're watching your, your movie, especially if they're uh, you know, of a uh, less extreme aspect ratio. You're getting an absolutely fantastic uh, experience on that internal display. And I'll be honest, that, that camera behind the screen, I've actually forgotten it's there when I'm using the phone in normal mode because you guys, you, you kind of just, forget that it's there, the, the pixels that are there enabled 
uh, whilst the screen is being used for other stuff other than the camera is are sufficient to actually just block it out from your normal view and you completely just forget about it and you are just thinking of uh, you're looking at a full screen display it's awesome so anyway I've spoken a lot about this case let's go ahead and get this case off quickly now I want to put that flappy case on there just to demonstrate some of the issues I've had with it right you can see this is definitely catching dust on the sides just to show you the sticky back thing so what you've got is if you want to commit to this case permanently there's a little strip here which I clipped the ed edge off actually by the way um, just so that it wasn't hanging out on the screen but there was like a little tab to peel it back easier this is a sticky back thing here you've got to peel this stick, uh, this film back and then you've got a double sided strip that will stick onto the edge of the device here um, so you'd probably want to just wipe it down if you've been holding the phone without something first to make sure it's got no grime on it and that's going to ensure good adhesion from the case to that actual front edge of the display um, without the case this thing is just even more gorgeous but this case is not bad at all look how thin that is can you see can you see how thin that is you can see what i'm getting at right if i hold something else closer to light to focus have a look at that look how thin that is it's not even a millimeter Let's get the back one off as well now. I think this should, I've not taken this off since I put it on, so I think it should just be easy enough to clip it off without doing any damage, hopefully. I might have to even open the device to get it off, I don't know. So let's just try and get this off now. Um, not something I intend on doing after this video again, to be honest, so if it is difficult to get off, I'm not too fussed because I'm not gonna be doing this a lot. Uh, as you can see, I am struggling to get it off, which is a good indication that it's definitely on there quite firmly, right? Let me just try and pry it off, uh, holding it a bit closer to myself. Right, okay, I've managed to get it off just by getting my nail in there, and I'll try and do the same on this side. And then after that, hopefully, it will just uh, it will clip off, right? I hope he says, he says... This is absolutely by no means any good demonstration of how to remove a case from your phone but it is a demonstration of how well this thing clips onto the phone once it's on there and the fact that it's not going anywhere very easy is it really? It really is staying on there quite firm and there we go I've got it off finally and as you can see oh that is just holding on for dear life isn't it? It's off there we go I could have done a video on just removing the case. Maybe I should have done that. This device is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Honestly, just, well, it's gorgeous. You can see how quick the fingerprint sensor registry my fingerprint there, right? It's a 2D scanner, but soon, literally, as soon as my thumb or finger touches it, it just unlocks. It's just so quick. You can see it unlocking many times while I'm recording the video. Anyway, let's get this one back on then, right? I've got some plastic still on there that I haven't peeled off, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel that off now. Um, let's just get that off because I definitely do not need that on there. Maybe that was making it difficult to get the case on and off as well. Right, get rid of that. Let's get this flippy case. So now as I said, this is not a bad case and the fact that they give it to you for free, I don't know how long they're giving it to free for, definitely is not a gimmick. It's a nice case. It really is a very nice case, but here's the thing. While it's open, let me show you this. So this is the bit that sticks out. So again, what I was saying about the car holder, if you're getting this in your car, unless your car holder is gonna open, stretch out wide enough to get the phone in this way and hold onto the edges of the phone here, you're gonna have to put it this way. And the only way you can do that is by folding it back like this. Then you can get it into your car holder and that's okay, no problem. Uh, it is a little bit thicker. So it definitely adds some bulk to the device. It's thicker than the Aramid case. Um, in, in all dimensions. It definitely is a thicker case. Um, I don't know how else to describe it other than you have to take my word for it, but maybe if I go a bit closer there, you can see that this Aramid case is thinner. The problem with this flip back case is you've got this little rubber bumper sort of thing that's clipping onto the back of the case. And then on top of that, you've got this fabric pinned onto it. So there's a thickness associated with that as well. And I'll be honest, this, uh, this, this Aramid case is actually, the whole case is actually about um, the same thickness as the fabric that's attached to this rubber thing here. So obviously it's gonna be thinner, right? So this adds almost nothing to this case. Uh, sorry, to the phone, to the overall dimension. Where this all of a sudden, it's feeling a bit heavier, it's bulky. And now check this out. So I definitely can't grab the device like this because it's then you've got that thing going on there. That's a bad situation, isn't it? You know, you're gonna drop this thing, right? 
Um, so you can grip it like this, it's a bit wider, but you definitely can grip like that, no problem. Uh, I found myself resting my thumb here with this case a lot and just sort of pinning onto the edge of the device so it didn't flip back like you saw it doing there. And then it was okay, right? It gives you that sort of, you're holding the phone, uh, you're giving it a bit of protection, you're supporting it with one hand while you're using it. But generally you wanna be doing this. If you're typing with a phone this way, this is getting in your way. So again, you're gonna be folding it back to type or letting it hang like that to type, which is not very nice. If this case had a stand built in, I would be a bit more forgiving, but then you've just got this thing flapping here for no good reason, right? So that's that. Um, again, the selfie mode, right? You've got, if you've got your camera in selfie mode, using those three cameras to take pictures in the front, that is blocking half of your screen. So what's the point? It's not good, is it? And there's nothing else. If you take it all the way, you block the, block the cameras. So this is of no use to you if you're gonna be using the front uh, or the back camera system uh, and the front display there, which is a very nice front display to use as a monitor when you're sort of framing your selfies, right? Um, that's no good, is it? It's blocking the screen. It's such a nice feature to take advantage of and you can't really take advantage of it because the screen is being blocked, isn't it? So there you go. Other than that, I'll be honest, when your phone is closed, you've got the you know you've got your orders on display thing going on there as well, right? Um, which I have no idea there it is. And then you close it, and the orders on display goes off because this has got an active magnetic thing going on in there to tell the phone case is closed. There's no point having the screen on, and it turns the screen off. That's nice when it's in your pocket like this. Even with the orders on display, you are saving a bit of battery power. Not the biggest problem in the world because it's a battery efficient it always on display anyway. But still, you know, saving a few percent, a bit of juice, and you're protecting the front display there, which is, you know, you can't argue with that. But it has added a bit of bulk. Look at that. Can you see that? It is adding some meat to the phone. Be prepared for that. And then when it's in your pocket, it's doing this sort of a thing, which is a bit annoying, to be honest. I found it a bit annoying. So let's talk about using the phone with one hand with this. Now, this is a big problem. Because when your phone is open, what you've heard, your, your fingers are wrapping around there, right, to grip the phone but then you open the phone and as you try and grip it, this thing just flips back. So if you want to use the phone with one hand, you're going to be holding it like this. You haven't got a proper grip on the device then. I'll be honest, you haven't, look at that. Look where your fingers are, that's already feeling like it's slipping down. You've got more chance of dropping this. And then when you're trying to type and you're doing stuff with your fingers and you're getting your thumb out there to the edges where the keyboard is on this side, your phone sometimes, what you find is your finger here will just flip the case back and it'll close the phone and lock the phone once you're in the middle of your typing session and you're starting again, unlock, get back in there. It's just, you know, it's, I don't know. It's nice, it depends on your use cases really. It definitely adds some protection. As with this one, this one exposes the hinges, this one exposes the front edges of your device. Which one's more important to you? I don't know. One of them is gonna get damaged. You're either gonna damage the front edges of the device or you're gonna damage the hinge if you drop the phone. I'll be honest, with this one though, if this flaps open whilst the phone's going down, the whole front is completely exposed and you've got no protection anywhere. So this one, you know, you might still win a bit with this, to be honest. Overall, my preference is from a making the most of this sort of a device perspective. I find the flappy case a bit more of a hindrance, even though you can keep the S Pen with you. Unfortunately, it is a bit more of a hindrance and I'm upset about that because I'm uh, a, very 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 big fan of the note series i've been using the note series since the first iteration of the device and i've owned every single one right up through to the note 10 plus i didn't upgrade to the note 20 because i really was waiting for the fold 3 and i didn't see any real benefit in going from the note 10 to the note 20 to be honest for me it didn't look like i was going to get any significant benefit so i didn't bother upgrading that was the first year i hadn't upgraded in many many years um, I really was waiting for this sort of a device. It's uh, ticked all the boxes for me, it's fantastic, but I don't have the pen with me all the time and I've lost that sense of having that note type of a device where I can just pop out the pen and take a quick squig on my home screen. You know, this one, a bit more effort. If you want to use the pen, yes, you can do it on the home screen. You can take notes on the always on display. You can hit the, you can, well, if I turn it off there, right? So you can see from the off screen, same as with the note, you can hit that button on there and you can squiggle away, right? You can take your notes, no problem, it works. You can even pin them to the always on display and that's visible not just on the internal always on, but it's also visible on the external always on display. 
So it works. But how you carry this with you, this is the problem, right? You can't carry it with you if you want to use a nice sleek case like this. Yes, it's expensive, but it's very, very nice and functional. You can carry it with you if you want to use a case like this, but then you can't avoid the bulk factor. You can't ignore it. It is a problem, right? It's not the lightest device in the world. It's definitely good for what it is. Um, it's thick, as I said, because obviously it folds. It's got two sides to it. When it's when it's closed, it's going to be double the thickness. You can't when it's open. It's it's extremely slim to be honest. It's just like holding a thin tablet. It's nice. Look at that. But you can't avoid the thickness otherwise. So bear that in mind. Um, I don't know what else to say about this case. You know, it's good for a freebie. It protects your device until you decide to invest in something else. It might be that this just works for you for your use cases and your lifestyle. This might just work for you. It is a nice case. It's definitely not not nice. It's just not practical for me. So there you go. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you're thinking of buying the Aramid case and you weren't sure whether you should or not, hopefully this has helped you make a more informed decision. If you've got any questions on the case, definitely let me know. I'll be more than happy to try and answer whatever I can. Um, but I have tried to provide a, a detailed comparison of the two, a bit of a longer video than usual. But I thought if, if I spend time to properly describe the pros and cons of both cases, you might be able to make a more informed decision on whether or not you invest in something like this or whether or not this gives you everything you need and maybe you didn't get the freebie or maybe um, uh, you, you know you're late to buying fold 3 in the next few months and the offer's gone and you end up having to buy this case or maybe you're in a region where they're not giving the case as a freebie and you're interested in buying it because of the pen right because the main feature of this fold 3 this new generation of folding devices this is a big feature so no, you shouldn't ignore that. You can't You can't just forget about the S Pen, it's important. So there you go. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button in that bottom right hand corner if you're not already subscribed so you can be notified of new videos. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and all the best.